By early May 1945, Nazi Germany was defeated. Her armies had surrendered, with millions of prisoners now the responsibility of the conquering Allies. The cities lay mostly in ruins after years of Allied bombing and then ground fighting, with millions of Germans homeless or displaced. Then there were the war crimes trials and the re-education of the Germans away from Nazism to democracy to contend with and the garrisoning and management of a divided Germany as well. In 1945, Germany as a nation-state had ceased to exist. It was instead four occupation zones, American, British and French in the West, and Soviet in the East. Berlin, the old German capital, was in the Soviet East, but was itself divided into American, British, French and Soviet occupation zones. For the Americans, they faced a problem in garrisoning their occupation zones. Men to do it. With the war in Europe over, and by August 1945 the war against Japan as well, the combat soldiers wanted to return home. In the US zone, the US Army operated a system of points. The more points a soldier had accrued in war service, the higher likelihood of his being discharged back to civilian life at war's end. Huge numbers of experienced troops were therefore sent back stateside. The army in Europe, much reduced in quantity and quality, the latter as new conscripts arrived to replace veterans, was handed several different tasks. Firstly, the army had to occupy a devastated Germany rife with refugees, crime, black market activities and the ever-present fear of a resurgence of Nazism or Wehrwolf terrorist attacks by Hitler's diehards. Then there was the important role of defending the US zones against the Soviets. The Cold War broke out pretty quickly after the end of the Second World War, and Germany was the uneasy frontier between two competing ideologies. The Americans realized that in order to effectively police their zones, they needed highly mobile troops. So the decision was taken to create the United States Constabulary by re-rolling troops from armored divisions and mechanized cavalry units. The force was activated on the 10th of February 1946, initially with 30,000 men drawn from the U.S. occupation forces in Germany. Ten constabulary regiments were established, each of three squadrons, each squadron having five troops. Heavy equipment included a light tank troop with M24 chaffees. The other troops used jeeps, armed with 30 caliber machine guns and M8 armored cars, and were simply renamed Mechanized Cavalry Reconnaissance Squadrons from World War II. But there was one big difference between the World War II mechanized cavalry reconnaissance units and the constabulary. Each squadron also possessed one platoon of horse cavalry. It seemed almost an anachronism for the extremely mechanized U.S. Army, but it would make sense. During the European campaign, the U.S. Army had used no horses whatsoever. Unlike the German Army, starved of fuel, that used millions of horses to help haul artillery guns and supply wagons throughout the war, the U.S. Army was completely mechanized. All of the old horse cavalry units had been mechanized in the early 1940s, becoming the tank and armored car equipped units that had led the charge across Germany. So why did the U.S. Army reintroduce horses into its ranks in 1946? For several sound reasons. Horses were useful for crowd control, hence most police forces even today still have sections of mounted police. And they were extremely useful for patrolling wooded areas, mountainous areas and other locations which motor vehicles could not access. In total, the constabulary had around 300 horses on strength, along with two army veterinarians to care for them. The horses were ex-German army and SS mounts, already trained for military duty. A horse platoon consisted of one officer and 32 enlisted men, all experienced riders. They cared for their own mounts, but the horses had already been trained by the German army, 
so the men had to retrain the horses to accept commands given in English. Overall, the U.S. Constabulary would actively police 43,000 square miles of southern Germany and bits of Berlin, that's 16 million Germans who came under U.S. Constabulary control. Commanding the Constabulary was World War II veteran Major General Ernest N. Harmon, who previously commanded the 1st and 2nd Armoured Divisions and later the 22nd Corps in Europe. A no-nonsense, direct leader, Harman used Hermann Goering's personal train as his home from home, enabling him to visit his units dispersed all over Germany. Constabulary Central Headquarters was in the largely undamaged university city of Heidelberg. A special training school for the constabulary operated out of Sonthofen Castle, previously a Nazi leadership training academy, and was nicknamed the Constabulary West Point, after the famous U.S. military academy. Graduates were trained as both soldiers and policemen, learning police tactics such as searching suspects, making arrests and handcuffing. The recruitment requirements for constabulary troopers were stringent. The men had to be at least 5 feet 7 inches tall and a minimum of 140 pounds stripped, did not wear glasses and were intelligent, honest, loyal and observant. In order to distinguish constabulary soldiers from regular U.S. Army personnel, they wore M1 helmet liners with a blue stripe sandwiched between two bright yellow stripes with the constabulary badge on the front. They also wore yellow scarves and special boots, basically cut-down cavalry boots worn with trouser legs blouse like paratroopers. Personnel mounted on horses wore pre-war riding breeches, four-pocket blouses and high cavalry boots. Vehicles also wore distinctive stripes and constabulary insignia. The Germans called the constabulary the Lightning Police. While in the U.S. Army, they were known as the Circle C Cowboys, after their shoulder badges. Patrolling the border with Soviet East Germany was a tense and often dangerous affair. On the other side were the aggressive Volkspolizei, or People's Police, and also Soviet troops. Horse patrols were used to link static border posts and police the intervening countryside. Working in concert with West German border police, the constabulary tried its best to maintain control over the borders, as criminals, escaping Nazis and refugees tried to cross into the U.S. zone. For example, during the first six months of its existence, 2,800 constabulary personnel manning 120 border posts turned back 26,000 undocumented transients. In 1946, the first armed German unit since the war was created to assist the constabulary, the Lund Border Police, wearing World War II uniforms dyed dark blue and with German and U.S. weapons. All small constabulary units would have at least one German policeman with them at all times. But by 1948, it was clear that the mission of the constabulary was evolving from policing the U.S. occupation zones to the defense of West Germany from the Soviet Union. More regular army units, including artillery, were assigned to the constabulary until it was finally inactivated in 1952. But during its six years of operations, the constabulary had played an important role in restoring order to post-war Germany breaking up organized crime and tracking down wanted war criminals. Its mobility, including most importantly its horse patrols, allowed it to cover large areas of southern Germany and West Berlin. And the mounted platoons, the Circle C Cowboys, were the last regular horse cavalry used by the U.S. Army, proving that the horse still had a role in the age of atomic warfare. Though no longer in frontline service, today horses continue in U.S. Army service, though only in a ceremonial role. Since 1972, 40 horses from the 1st Cavalry Division Horse Cavalry Detachment are at Fort Hood in Texas. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and share. And don't forget to check out my new audiobook channel, War Stories with Mark Felton, link in the description box below. You can also help to support my channels at PayPal and Patreon. See the description box for details.